In this module, we're going to talk about solubility, what it is and how to predict it, and uh, what precipitation reactions, what they are and how to write them. So first, um, in the next few modules, we're going to talk about, be talking about different kinds of chemical reactions. And so it's very useful to know the signs that what a chemical reaction or chemical change has occurred, particularly in lab. So you should memorize these five signs. Formation of a precipitate. If you see a solid or the solution gets cloudy, that's a precipitate. And that's one sign of a chemical change. If the color changes, likely there was a chemical change. If there's gas evolved, you either see bubbles or you smell something, another sign. If the temperature changes, if it gets the, whatever's holding the, the reaction vessel, it gets hotter or colder, that's a sign a chemical change happened. And if light's emitted, that's also another sign. So memorize these guys. Now, we're going to want to know what it means for something to be an electrolyte. An electrolyte, in general, just is something, it means that something, when you put it into water, it dissociates, it breaks apart into ions, cations and anions. Um, and it ends up that when you have pure water with no ions in it at all, it won't conduct electricity. There's no way for the current to pass through, this, through, through the water. But if you have even a few ions, then you can pass a current through. And that's kind of what these pictures are showing. With, a non um, with something that doesn't break apart into ions, um, you won't be able to, if you have the wires that are powering this light bulb, it, they have to pass through this, this beaker here with water in it, or with you know, a non-electrolyte, won't light up. Um, if it's an electrolyte, the light bulb will light up. And what we call a strong electrolyte really makes it glow brightly, a weak electrolyte it glows dimly. Um, because a strong electrolyte is something that we, when, you put it into, when we put it into water, it totally breaks apart into its cations and its anions. Everything we put in there into the solution breaks apart into cations and anions. On a weak electrolyte, what we put in there, only some of the, the, the particles break apart um, into cations and anions. An example of a strong electrolyte would be something like sodium chloride or maybe hydrochloric acid. An example of a weak electrolyte might be acetic acid, and we'll see those later. So I just need to know in general what an electrolyte is and that there's non-electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and strong electrolytes. So <clears throat> solubility. Solubility is defined as how much of a substance called the solute. The solute is the thing that we're dissolving in the solvent. We'll dissolve in a given amount of solvent at a specified temperature. And it depends on the temperature. You know, if you heat something up, a lot of times you can make more some of, of the solute dissolve. So that's what the solubility is. And we have a list of rules here, guidelines really, um, to tell us whether or not something is soluble in an aqueous solution. This, this list is for ionic compounds being dissolved in water. You should memorize it and put it on your card. And it just says that if the anion is nitrate, then it's soluble, period. If the cation is one of these. Now, this isn't that hard to remember because this is just the first column of the periodic table, the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. They're all plus one cations. And if these are the cations, as well as ammonium being the cation, then it doesn't matter what the anion is, it's soluble. Now, if the anion is chloride, bromide, or iodide, almost all the time it's soluble in less. Now, you've got to memorize the exceptions here. If the cation is silver, lead 2, or mercury 1, then chlorides and bromides and iodides are not soluble. So silver chloride, silver bromide, silver iodide, and so on will be insoluble. They won't break apart when we put them into a solution. Now, just a quick reminder, mercury 1, this is mercury 1. Remember, mercury 2 is just Hg with a positive 2 charge. Mercury 1 isn't Hg with a plus 1. It's, 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 like, it's like a diatomic, Hg2, 2, two plus. All right. So next, sulfates. If the anion is, a sul is SO4 2 minus sulfate, then it's soluble almost all the time, unless the cation is one of these barium, lead 2, mercury 1, and calcium. If the anion is hydroxide, then it's insoluble most of the time. Unless, if we go back up here, if the cation is one of these guys with hydroxide, then it's still soluble. Same thing for sulfides, carbonates, chromates, and phosphates. Almost all of these guys are insoluble, again, unless the cation is 
one of these. So for example, sodium phosphate would be soluble. But, oh, I don't know, let's say chromium or iron phosphate, iron 3 phosphate would be insoluble. So memorize this list, it's pretty important. Now, what, are, what kind of compounds are strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes? Well, you saw, just saw that, that those guidelines that we saw. If it's something that's predicted to be soluble from that list that we just had, then that ionic compound is a strong electrolyte. Other strong electrolytes are the strong acids, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, perchloric acid, and sulfuric acid. You should memorize these four. It's important. These are all acids. They begin with hydrogen, and they're all strong electrolytes, or, and also what we call strong acids, meaning that when we put these guys into water, they break apart into hydrogen ion and the rest, which is the anion. So nitric acid, when we put it into water, all of the molecules break apart into H plus and NO3 minus. Now here with sulfuric acid, H2SO4, it's only the first proton that's, a, that's strongly acidic, that's, that's a, a, that makes this a strong electrolyte. So when we put sulfuric acid into water, one of these hydrogen ions, H pluses, come off all the way, leaving HSO4 minus. And then it gets a little more complicated. That's 102 stuff. Now, the weak acids, which ones are the weak acids? Well, if it's an acid, it starts with hydrogen, but it's not one of these guys right here, then it's weak acid. And those are weak electrolytes. What that means is that when we put them in water, um, they don't, all the molecules do not break apart into the hydrogen ion and the anion, but rather just some of them. Another example of a weak electrolyte would be something that has nitrogen in it, like this, ammonia, or sometimes instead of a hydrogen here, we have carbons, right? But we have a nitrogen here. And that nitrogen, what it does with, when you put it into water, this pair of electrons here, now let's do this. This pair of electrons grabs a proton, whoa, that's not very good, from the water and takes it for itself, making the ammonium ion. And that leaves behind, now the two electrons that are in this bond, they, they stay here on the oxygen. So it becomes hydroxide. And so we've made hydroxide. It's a what we call a weak base. Now, this for any weak acid or weak base, weak electrolyte really, there's these, see these two arrows? That's different than we've seen before. And what that means is that it's going back and forth all the time. Um, the concentrations stay constant, but the molecules themselves are going back and forth. That's an equilibrium, we say. Now, precipitation reactions. This is one type of reaction. We're going to see a general type of reaction. And the easiest way to talk about these is just to give you an example. Silver nitrate and sodium chloride. Now that you know about the list of solubility rules, go back and look at it. And you'll see that silver nitrate is predicted to be soluble because the anion is nitrate. It doesn't matter what the cation is, that's soluble. When something is soluble, we write AQ in parentheses after it to show that it dissol it's dissolved in water. Now, sodium chloride is also soluble. Go back at the rules and look at the rules and, and make sure you understand why that's so. The products over here are silver chloride. This is insoluble. Again, look at the rules and make sure you see why. And sodium nitrate, which is soluble. Now, what you do in precipitation reactions, what's really going on is you have two things that are soluble. These are the reactants. What you do is you take the cation from one, the silver, and you pair it up with the anion from the second. See this, how we do this? And then you go look on your list of solubility rules and you see if it's soluble or insoluble. So you write it down. It was insoluble, so we write an S. If it's insoluble, we write S for solid. And do the same. So here we take the cation from here, the sodium ion, pair it up with the anion, the nitrate, the O3 minus, and we get sodium nitrate. Go look up in our list of solubility rules and see what we see that that's soluble, so we write AQ. Now, if you're doing that for and everything is aqueous over here and over here, then that means nothing happened. It's no reaction. There's no change, really. So can you do this? Let's look at these guys. So there's lead 2 nitrate, and if you look at the rules, that's soluble because of the nitrate. Potassium chloride is soluble. What are the products? If any, right? Because if they're all aqueous, then it's not. 
So we'll pause it for a minute, minute, go ahead and see if you can figure it out. Come back and here we are. Whoa. This is gonna be lead two chloride, which is insoluble in a solid, and it's gonna be potassium nitrate, which is soluble. Uh, now this isn't balanced because we still need to put a, a two here to get two um, and a two here for the two chlorides and the two potassiums. Now it's balanced. All right. Now, net ionic equations, they're really, really easy. What a net ionic equation does, net ionic equation does, is it isolates the chemistry that's happening in, happening in a chemical reaction. All you have to do to write a net ionic equation, let's look at that one we just did. Silver nitrate and sodium chloride making silver chloride and sodium nitrate. You look for anything that's not aqueous on the right-hand side of the arrow. See what's in it, the cation and the anion. Go find that cation over here, pull it away from the anion and write it just by itself. Same thing for the anion. Go find it and write it by itself. And then you write this. And this is the, do you see that? That's the net ionic equation. That's all there is to it, really. Um, you do that if it's a solid or a liquid or a gas over here. Anything that's not aqueous. Anything that's not aqueous, look for it's, it on the other side of the arrow and write it down on both sides. So let's go down here. Hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, both soluble. This is a strong acid. Sodium makes this hydroxide soluble. And what we did is we took the hydrogen, paired it up with the hydroxide. You see that? The cation and the second anion. And that makes HOH, which is really just water, H2O, which is a liquid. Okay. And then we take, took this cation, sodium, paired it up with this anion, chloride, made sodium chloride, which is soluble through right, aqueous. So the only thing that's not aqueous is water. So that's H2O. It's, it might be useful to think about it as HOH because the cation is H plus and the anion is OH minus. So we go find the H plus over here. It's in hydrochloric acid, write it down. Hydroxide over here, add them together, there's the net ionic equation.